Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I will show you how to set up and run Apache Spark using PySpark in Google Colab step by step. We will also understand what Colab and PySpark are and how PySpark behaves once it's installed. So let's get started. First, let's quickly talk about Google Colab. Colab, short for collaboratory, is a free cloud-based Jupyter notebook provided by Google. It allows you to run Python code in your browser with no installation required. You even get access to free CPU, GPU and TPU resources. It's widely used for machine learning, data science and even big data experimentation. But here is the thing, Colab does not come with Spark pre-installed. So we will have to set it up manually. Now what exactly is PySpark? PySpark is the Python API for Apache Spark, which is a powerful open source engine for big data processing. Spark is written in Scala and runs on the Java Virtual Machine or JVM. PySpark let you use Spark Power like parallel computation, SQL querying and streaming using Python. It is super useful when you are working with large data set or distributed computing. Alright, let's now dive into the setup. We will go line by line so you understand exactly what's happening. Here first line install Java 8 which is required for Spark to run because Spark operates on the JVM. The hyphen QQ flag makes the install quiet and the greater than slash dev slash null part hides the output so our notebook stays clean. Here second line downloads the Apache Spark version 3.4.4 with Hadoop 3 support. The wget command grabs it from the Apache archive site and again the hyphen Q makes it silent. This line extracts the Spark tarball we just downloaded. It will create a folder called Spark 3.4.4 bin hyphen Hadoop 3 which contains all the necessary files. Next, pip install hyphen Q find Spark. Install the Python helper library called find Spark. This makes it easier to connect Python to the Spark runtime by setting up environment paths internally. So let's run this cell and wait until the run of the cell is completed. So the execution of the cell is completed. Next, Spark needs to know where Java and Spark are installed. So we do that using the environment variables. So this line tells the system where Java is located. Similarly, this line sets the path where Spark is installed right inside our Colab notebook environment. Now it's time to start the Spark in Python. Next, we import the find Spark library and initializes the find Spark. Find Spark library is used to initialize and locate the Spark installation. After this, we can use Spark Python APIs. Next, we import the main entry point for working with structured data, that is the Spark session class. Next, we are creating the Spark session. Here, app name setup by Spark gives your application a name. Master local means Spark will run in local mode using all the available CPU core. Get or create will create a new session if one doesn't already exist. Next, we have written Spark. This just displays the Spark session details so you can confirm it's running correctly. So let's run this cell. So here you can see in the output the Spark version 3.4.4 is installed and PySpark is running in local mode. Since Spark is set up, Let's see in action by creating a PySpark data frame. Here we define a list of student records. Each student has a name, age and the list of courses they have enrolled. This line defines the column header that we will use in the data frame. Next we create a PySpark data frame using the data and columns we just defined. df.show displays the data frame in a nicely formatted table. So how is PySpark running in Colab? Even though Spark is designed for distributed computing across the clusters, here in Colab it runs in local mode. That means it runs on a single machine that is the Colab virtual instance. It uses all the available CPU core for parallel execution. No actual Spark cluster is set up but we still get the Spark full API. And that's it. 
you have now successfully set up PySpark in Google Colab and created your first data frame. So this setup is perfect for learning, prototyping and small to medium data analysis. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.